living in the overflow. I'm covered by your love, moving with the Holy Ghost. You're more than enough. I'm walking in your freedom now. Covered by your grace, witnessing your healing power. March. Yes, I think we're already at March. The divine prerequisites to victorious living and service. That's the theme of our service this morning as we seek to honor the Lord in all that we do. And I'm going to invite the Saul to bow our heads and our hearts as we look to the Lord in prayer at this time. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we give you thanks for who you are. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are the one who parted the sea so that the people could walk through on dry land. You are the God that raised the dead. And Father, you are the God that says you will never change. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And with this assurance, with this fact that we know, we can come boldly before your throne and ask, Lord Jesus, that you will cleanse our hearts and our minds as we come together for corporate worship. We understand and we know that we do not fight in this physical world, but Lord, we are only human, so we ask that you will fight the battles for us which we cannot fight. And so we would ask that you will bind the forces of evil even now, in the name of Jesus, so that your spirit will have free access today, that you will speak to each person today, and that all of us, as we leave, we will leave with the understanding that God is real. And truly, you are coming again. Because you told us that you have gone to prepare a place for us. And that, Lord, we can have this blessed assurance that truly, those of us who have said yes to you, we can say, Jesus is mine. So, Father God, we place everything in your hands. We place you at the highest plane, Lord. And we know that as we seek to honor you, Lord, even our praises will be even fall short. But we ask that you accept the praises due unto you. And we pray that even the deliverance of your word will go forth today with power. Power not of human, but power from on high. Lord, we know whom we serve, and we can say yes, Lord, because truly you are here. We give you thanks in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I invite the worshipers to join me as we say, Lord, prepare me to be a sacrifice. Lord, prepare me this morning. <laughs> i 
shackles off my feet and let me dance and let me praise the Lord. We are here this morning to praise the Lord, aren't we? Amen. And if you are here to praise the Lord, let's join with me and sing. Um, let's enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts as we give the Lord praise and thanksgiving.
save some of the energies for later. <laughs> How I praise thee, precious Savior, that thy love laid hold of me. Thou hast saved and cleansed and filled me, that I might thy channel be. We sing the song, Channels Only, Blessed Master, but with all thy wondrous power flowing through us, thou canst use us every day and every hour. Let's sing the song as if we know it, as if we understand what you are singing this morning. Oh 
save me. Witness in thy power to save me, set him free from self and sin. Thou hast brought us to possess me, in thy fullness, Lord, come in. Good morning, everyone. Great to see you here today. And it's always good to be in God's house to celebrate his goodness and his kindness because that is the reason why we're here today. Amen? Amen. Of course, we want to take time out to welcome those who are joining us. Welcome those who are online and those who are here in our auditorium, and especially those who are with us for the very first time. You have never worshipped at Hayden Hill Baptist Church before, whether you're in the auditorium or online. This is your first time. Please stand for a brief moment or indicate in the chat. We'd like to recognize you by singing this welcome song for you. Anyone like that today? Your very first time on a Sunday morning worshiping at this church. All right. We have a lot of people here with us. Lead in the back. Okay. We want, we're delighted to have you today, our special guest. And we trust that you have been blessed by the service so far and will be blessed for the rest of it. Let's sing our song, please. Thank you for taking time out to be here today. Continue to be blessed by the service. All right, and those who are online, we're happy to have you as well. All right, uh, anyone celebrating a birthday today or sometime during this week? Anyone like that? You can stand for a brief moment again. Anyone like that today or during this week? All right. Jordan and Jonathan in the back. Others online. Well, sing, let's sing happy birthday to these. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you, happy birthday to you. May the good Lord, may the good Lord bless you, may the good Lord bless you, may the good Lord blessed birthday and may you live to enjoy to celebrate many more for many many years to come and anyone celebrating a wedding anniversary today or sometime during this week anyone like that again if you're online you can indicate in the chat how many years you've been celebrating together anyone like that all right we see people are online let's sing happy anniversary to these Lord. 
God bless you. May he give you good health and wealth <laughs> to enjoy many more anniversaries for many, many years to come. Thank you very much, uh, praise team. And we want to take time out here to highlight a few notices for us uh, today. Uh, again, welcome everyone uh, today to our service. And the theme today is a divine prerequisite, prerequisites for victorious living and service. You got to do it God's way. We'll hear a little bit more about that um, from Reverend Smith, senior pastor. He's in his 48th year. As of next month, he'll be here for 48 years. That's truly amazing. All right, so we bless God for that, and you'll be hearing from him in a little while. But in the meantime, we want to take time out to just highlight a few notes. Is, uh, uh, we wanna, is uh, Anya Matlaral here today? All right, Anya, could you stand up so we can see where you are? And you're with somebody as a friend that we don't know. Yes? All right, so we're happy to have Anya, Anya B, right? One of our rising stars from here in the Baptist Church from grassroots right up. And we praise God for that. Happy to have you back as well. Thank you. All right, uh, anyone else who is back, happy to have you. And please let us know these things so we can highlight it as well. Uh, a couple of notices here. Continue to keep in mind the sign language classes that are held on a Saturday. If you want to learn the sign language, it's that section over here. Uh, where we communicate with the deaf. Um, so you can learn how to do that. And um, that Saturday is at 2.30. And the last class will be this Saturday, 2.30 to 4 o'clock. All right? Contact Sister Raquel Campbell for that. Uh, the Cedar Grove Baptist Church will be having their harvest service on Sunday. That's next Sunday at 4 p.m. And this is our sister church in Portmore. Uh, the theme is getting back to the basics in soul winning. The speaker is Pastor Philip Cardis, and there will be items on sale, grown provisions, pastries, soup, etc. And this is going to be after the, the service. And our combined choir will be ministering. As Hayden Baptist Church's combined choir will be ministering, and all are invited to attend and support this event. And yes, it is face to face. Um, so we can. Uh, make plans to attend this event. All right, that's next Sunday at four o'clock. The Christian Education Department, uh, the program in, Christian Education Program invites all of us to its annual Easter program, and the theme, Praise, Praises Rising to You. And the date, that is the last Sunday in this month, the 31st of March, the time is 6 p.m. The venue is right here at Hayden Baptist Church. And you want to circle your calendar and to make sure that you attend this event. It will be very exciting. Uh, all right. And the Creative Arts Ministry uh, presents a live presentation, Burden of the Cross, featuring drama, dance, and more. This will be held in the church auditorium Sunday, April 21 at 6 p.m. Save the date and can begin to invite others to this. It is going to be a great event as well. Uh, family updates for us. Family focus tip, if you are too busy to enjoy quality time with your family, then you need to re-evaluate your priorities. If you are too busy to enjoy quality time with your family, then you need to re-evaluate your priorities. D. Willis, right? Uh, how many people on their deathbed ever wish they spent more time at work? Stephen Covey. Uh, updates continued here, reading through the Bible, for today, three chapters a day, nine ch Judges chapter 19, 20, and 21. And by next week, you should be in 1 Samuel chapter 16, 17, and 18. And as the Jewish proverb says, reading the Bible 100 times is better than reading it 99 times. Uh, the health fair ministry, caring ministry is in need of volunteers to work in different areas at the health fair Saturday, May this is on Saturday, May 18. Kindly contact the church office, Brother Deacon Lloyd Gardner or Sister Beverly Johnson, 
to register. They were in desperate need of workers, they need your support to making this event a success. And as for weekly connection, are you a new believer or an individual considering becoming a member of Haven Hill? Well, our new converts and membership class is for you. The class for adults take place in Reverend Smith's office, which is just around the corner upstairs. And the class for children takes place over in the Winston Smith building over that, that would be to your right, the last office down the hallway. And the classes begin at 11 a.m. Also under the Christian education program today, if you are a parent and you have a child that's three years and under, we have a nursery available uh, that you can take your child to. We have caring staff there to help you, or you can attend to your child in the nursery, or you can leave your child there and be in the service, um, whichever suits you best. And that would be, it's right around the corner here, and that's for the entire service if you want to do that, all right? For any child ages three and under, um, you can take the child to that location. And any child ages three to nine years, in a little while we'll be having children's church when the college come up, and we're gonna pray for you and send you off to children's church, all right? And for other weekly connections, every Tuesday at 7.30, we have Men's and Ladies Fellowship. At 7.30, the credentials are online. Wednesday night, we have Bible study, 7.30 p.m. The credentials are also online. These are all face-to-face, -face, by the way. And for the Bible study, we'll be in Chapter 5 of First Peter in our series, uh, so you can read ahead. And on Friday, we have Youth Fellowship right here, which is games night, so we are compatible clothing and sneakers for that, right here, 7 p.m., on the campus. And the last thing here for this uh, weekly program here is the AIBC Youth Conference that's coming up, and it's gonna be in St. Elizabeth. And I know we have a bus uh, reserved for this. Uh, young persons who want to be a part of this, there's 14 spots left on the bus. And in case people are wondering, parents are wondering what this is about, it's like, think about camp. It's like a one-day camp, it's great worship, great fellowship, young people from all over the island coming together dynamic, life-changing speaker, relatable messages. And just think about when kids who are coming to Jesus Christ and coming into membership, sharing about how camp has impacted their lives and so forth. Youth conference is something like this can be a life-changing experience for young people. And whatever you're trying to accomplish in your child spiritually, this will only help to accentuate that and accelerate that as well. It's a great environment. And the bus, only $500 for the bus. And you can have a you can, you can see the benefits of all your hard work pouring into your child um, in amazing ways for that. So don't hesitate to send your child. If we have to get another bus, we will be willing to do that. All right, so please pay attention to that. Sign up ASAP and 14 spot left, sports spots are left and you don't, want to get missed, you don't want to get left behind here. All right, and the book that they'll be studying, which is one of the key features, is a quiz, 1 John chapter 1 to 5. And finally here, with our weekly connection, we have evangelism, uh, we have prayer for these things, evangelism online on a Friday night, as well as on a Saturday afternoon, and we physically go out face-to-face -face into the community and talk to people about Jesus, pray for people, invite people to church, lead people to Christ, all these things, and uh, this is something we continue to invite us because one of our core pillars as a church is outreach, evangelism and outreach, and if a church doesn't care about outreach or engage in outreach, that church is going to die. So it's very, very important that we note these things, practice these things personally in our lives, as well as when we go out as a church corporately to support these kind of events. And so far, and the last addition was out of outreach last week, Saturday, we have four persons who have surrendered to Jesus Christ, and we praise God for that. All right? So those are the main announcements. And if there are no other announcements, we're going to invite our brother Noel to come back and just put in a notice. We're going to be having a baby blessing. So the persons who are here for the baby to be blessed, just put in a notice because that will be done um, in a little bit. All right? We continue to worship the Lord this morning as we will look into scripture, I invite you to turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 9, and the reading will be led by Sister Leanne Tyrrell, from verse 19 through to 27. Please stand as we read God's word.
Good morning, church. Um, today's scripture reading will be taken from 1 Corinthians 9, and I'll be reading verses 19 to 27. I'll be reading from the NIV. Though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone, to win as many as possible. To the Jews, I became like a Jew, to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am on un but I'm under Christ's law, so as to win who's not having the law. To the weak, I became weak, to win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means, I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Though I do not run like someone running aimlessly, I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. This is the word of the Lord. Okie dokie. I'm going to invite the ushers to come as we worship the Lord with our morning tithes and offering. Right after our offering, I'm going to invite those who are here for the blessings of the babies to come forward right at the front here. While we do that. During the offering, we'll have a musical introduced by our brother Lennox and So I invite the ushers to come at this time. Brother Granston, could you pray for us? Morning, church. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for bringing us here today safely so we can worship you. Lord, I pray that as we are about to give back of what you have blessed us with, we will give with a cheerful heart these things we ask in your name as we give to the furtherance of your work. Amen. the prayer team to come at this time as we sing and enter it. Wherever I go, I'll praise him wherever I am. I'll praise him for his love.
You deserve the glory and the honor as we lift up our holy hands in God's house. You deserve the glory and the honor.
invite those who are here for the dedication of babies to come forward at this time. The Word of God speaks that children are an heritage from the Lord. And it adds, blessed are those who have their queen of birth. But then it didn't stop there. It gives a charge. It says, bring up the child in the way he should go. And when he is old, could add the word she also. They will not depart from it. So we find here a privilege, but it carries with it a tremendous responsibility. You can't give what you don't have. So it means that if you're a parent, you have to make certain that you are rightly related to your God that you might be able to pass that on to your children. I don't have to emphasize how critical that is in our time. And there is so much evil and wickedness around us, so many things seeking to take charge of the lives of our children. And the only safe insulation that we have is Jesus Christ. Just you understand that. And that you not only be the example, but you provide the means to bring up that child to the glory of God. I'm not going to take them in my arms right now, but I'm just going to lay my hands on them and pray. Who's going to have them? The baby's name. Milton. Nielsen. Let's pray. Father, I lay my hand on Nielsen and I beg you in the name of Jesus to reach down and touch this young life and call that at an early age this young one would come to trust you and to serve you to bring glory to you and a blessing to society. Pray for parents that you'll help them to provide this young child the resources, needs to live for you, to glorify you, to honor you. Bless the child and bless the parent, we pray. In the name of Jesus and for the glory of God. Amen. Xander, there are these new and pretty names that I have here for you, son. Lord, I lay my hands upon young Xander. Tremendous potential for your glory and for good, blessing the society. But there are myriads of forces that will be working over time to prevent that from becoming a reality. I beg you to build a hedge around his mind and heart, emotion and will, that at an early age, he would personally trust you as savior. I pray, O oh Lord, that he will grow up to honor you. And I beg you to help the parents to know that they can't give what they don't have, that they need you, first of all, as their Savior and Lord, that they can pass it on to their son. We bless you, we praise you, as we commit him to your mercy and your grace. Sanctify this young life, we pray, in the name of Jesus, and for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Can I have you? Oh, no, you know, okay. Godparent, okay. There's quite a young Godparent here, eh?
Yes, sir. I invite the children ages nine. Hmm? <laughs> children ages nine or three to nine, nine and under, okay? To come forward as we pray for you and go over to children's church. All the children ages three, two to nine. with the children at this time. Everybody looking. Right. Okay. Father, we thank you for these children, these young lives. We pray, Lord, that as they go over to children's church, that you will lead them in a path that is right. So that, Lord, truly, as we just prayed, at an early age, they will come to know you as personal Lord and Savior. Because we need the next generation to be better than the current one, Lord. Because there are so many things happening. But Lord, we just place them in your hands now. And look to you. And even as the teachers go, Lord, that you will inspire them to teach that which is right and from the word of the Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to invite the choir to come. And after the choir, Pastor Smith will deliver the message. morning. Praise the Lord, church. We know our God is indeed faithful. So today we want to just worship him and thank him for his faithfulness. May your heart be blessed. How many knew God is faithful? Oh, he is faithful. Faithful, faithful, faithful is. Oh, I thank you, you're faithful. Faithful, faithful is. Oh, I thank you, God, you're faithful. Faithful, faithful is. Oh, I thank you, you're faithful. Faithful, faithful is. 
Come on, choir. I'm reaping the harvest of promise. Take back, Take back what the devil stole from me. And I rejoice today. For I shall, For I shall recover yes, it all. Yes, I. Oh, today. For I shall recover it all. Oh, he is faithful. 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 Thank you, God. Oh, I thank you, God. You're faithful. Faithful. Faithful is. Oh, I thank you. You're faithful. Faithful. Faithful is. Come on, tell them why. Oh, I'm reaping the harvest of promise. Take back.
Amen, church? Yeah. Hey, you're free to say hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you very much for the choir for that special. All right, we invite our senior pastor to come. Pay keen attention to these prerequisites because there is no other way to benefit as he's shared today. Many of you will remember Pastor Edwards. We're very close to him. And he celebrated his 100th birthday yesterday. It was a wonderful, wonderful time together, recalling his ministry, the impact he made on so many lives. And that celebration will continue this evening at the, um, what church again? Boulevard Baptist Church at what time? At five, Boulevard Baptist at five. And uh, if any of you can go, I think it will be highly appreciated. Let us pray. Father, we bow in your presence. We come as empty, hungry vessels desiring to be filled with your truth, with your presence, with your power. Where deliverance is needed, where empowerment is needed, we pray, almighty, all-sufficient God, will meet these needs. Be glorified. If there's any in the service who is not a Christian, who have been putting it off, it's quite the biggest gamble they will ever make, as nobody knows when. Pray that you'll help them to make that critical decision to trust you today. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. You know, there's something deep within all of us that loves to win. Loves to win. But as you would have discovered, to be a winner, to realize that dream, To accomplish that major objective, there are certain prerequisites that have to be met. Of tremendous spiritual significance is the fact that Paul, after establishing in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, Verse 1 through verse 12, the fact that though like a high-ranking officer in the military, his position as an apostle carried with it lots and lots of clout. Lots and lots of rights. Lots and lots of privileges. He chose to turn his back on all those rights and the privileges 
that he might not be a hindrance to the spread of the gospel. It was a man with a heart. And that should kind of drive us to search through our own lives. What am I doing that would prevent anyone from coming to know Jesus Christ as my personal Savior and Lord? But when Paul declared in 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 24, do you not know that those who run in a race run all? But only one receives the prize. Let me add, so run that you may obtain. Don't waste your energy. Run with the, the goal in mind. You might be a winner that you may obtain. He was establishing the fact that the first prerequisite for victorious, God-honoring, Christian living and service is action. You can't sit down, fold your spiritual arms, and expect to be a winner. You have to get up, embrace God's provision, and act upon them. Paul was saying, in essence, to be a victorious Christian, to win the Christian race, you can't just watch others run. Some people come to church just to watch how other Christians behave, how they run. You can't just watch other Christians run. You have to personally become a disciplined participant in the Christian race. So if you're saved, ask yourself the question, have I been one of those just watching other Christians run? Finding fault about their running? <laughs> or have I been an example in the Christian race? Then to make certain that we run the Christian race successfully, Paul was careful to point out that we not only have to exercise self-control, we have to follow the rules of the race. You learned that when you went to school and participated in track and field. There are rules that have to be followed. You're a boxer. Same principle. There are some rules that have to be followed. You can't go there and punch the person down when they're just sitting down and the whistle might blow to start. You have to follow the rules. For his timely declaration... In 1 Corinthians 9, 25, is, and everyone who competes for a prize is temperate, I would say, self-controlled in all things. And it says, they do it to obtain a perishable crown. Look at those people. In boxing and the training and in football, basketball, a lot of sweat, the training. And what do they get? A crown that is perishable. But he says, we, when we fight for the rules unto God's glory, we get an imperishable crown. I don't care how you polish what you get here. <laughs> It can't last. But nothing can corrupt or destroy the crown that God gives to his faithful servants. Amen? Nothing. 
We need to embrace those realities. Let them be motivating realities in our own life. Paul is saying that as spiritual runners, we have to not only listen to the whistle or gun <laughs> of our heavenly starter, And we have to not only run in our assigned lane. <laughs> you know, God has a lane for each of us to run in. That was not set up for us. Go out there watching other people. Make certain you know the lane in which God wants you to run. And you run in that lane. As a spiritual boxer. We have to pay close attention to the directives of the referee. You can't, when the whistle blows and you sit down, when you notice that your opponent is not looking, you crawl over and punch him out. You have to wait until the whistle is blown. You start again. On top of that, when Paul went on to declare in 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 26, he says, Therefore I run, not as uncertainly. You have to know where you're going. You have to know the route and how to get there. I run not as uncertainly. I fight, not as one that beateth the air. And listen to what he says. But I discipline my body, and I bring it into what? Subjection. First of all, to God. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a cast away. A timely word for us believers. I have to live consistently with what I preach. I have to make certain that when I face God and stand before his judgment bar, I will not be rejected. I will not be a cast away. But God will be ready with all those trophies to place in my hand. Imperishable trophies to place in my hand. So he was saying that to compete successfully as he did, to make certain that we are not disqualified, My referee coming around here telling me how to put my finger. <laughs> I'm not disqualified at the end of the race. Demand not only our unswerving focus. You have to know where you're going. You have to know how to get there. And you have to follow the route, the road that God has mapped out for you. And you have to pursue that goal with discipline, self-control. I'm quite certain I should have heard some Christians say amen to that, eh? It is not easy to be a successful Christian. It, in, it involves what? Discipline. Focus. Grim determination. That you will not allow anything or anyone to stop you 
from pursuing that goal. So as we analyze these verses, we can actually see the spiritual sweat dripping from the faces of God's children. Now some of those things you can't, they don't come out natural, <laughs> but they are there. You can't see them with the natural eye, you can see them with the spiritual eye, but they are spiritual sweat dripping from our faces. By the way, the Christian life is not easy. It's a race. It is a wrestling match. It is a combat. <laughs> you have to pay close attention because if you don't, you're going to be knocked out by the enemy. You can hear the groans. I don't know about you, but I've had to have many groans in my life as a Christian. Groan, groan, groan. I've had things I pray for. I know my God is able. I know he spoke this amazing universe into existence. And I pray over and over and over again. It doesn't happen. I'm not very careful. I abandon my faith and say there is no God. You see, many of those things, God is more concerned about building our character, proving our faithfulness, than giving us what we want. Amen? The groans come. There are times when I lose sleep, asking God to do something. It's not happening, and I lose sleep. And the groans come echoing from the burdened souls. But you can be sure God is not blind or deaf. In many of these things, it's a twofold thing. He's building my character and showing his faithfulness. We can therefore understand where the Greek word Agonizomai. <laughs> Agonizomai. Meaning agony. That he uses that to drive home the divine effect or prerequisites for victorious, God honoring Christian living. I wish I could tell you that there's a shortcut. There are no shortcuts. Many of you know what I'm saying. Some of it is pain, some of it is sickness, some of it is hardship, some of it is what you experience at the workplace, some of it is what you experience with your neighbor. They come in all kinds and forms because God is seeking to fulfill his purpose in our life. But in order to qualify us, In order to qualify for the ancient Greek games, those athletes had to not only undergo rigorous training, and that's where many of us fall down. We don't want the training because it takes more time and we feel sleepy. Or we have a special, special program to watch on television. Eh? Rigorous training for at least eight months prior to the games. Prior to the games. And some of these things come to test who comes what? First. Not again, just watching games. <laughs> but he wants to make certain that in our planning, in our living, he is number one. He is number one. Sometimes I'm starting up to get out of the room, go to another room, or turn off the television. I can study. In these days, as I get much older, I become easily tired, drained. It's not easy. If I go with my feelings, I would never be here this morning. 
I have to put God first, and I have to trust him for grace to see me through. In fact, he says, my grace is what? My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect or complete in your weakness. You have to be careful. You can understand why Paul used the ancient Greek games as object lesson on the divine prerequisites for victorious God honoring Christian living. He makes it clear that to live for God is not a laid back lifestyle. Am I hearing some amen? Have you discovered that for yourself? It's not a laid back lifestyle. It's an active, disciplined, aggressive pursuit. Oh, my friend, I tell you, if I should go by how I feel sometimes, I would not even read my Bible or pray. I feel drained, I feel tired. Exhausted. I have to know that those things are necessary. And if I had a lot to do and didn't have time to do the research and study, I should do it. I have to get up early. Go off in my study room or area. Pray and ask God to enable me. For he says, my grace is what? Sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. If any of you can tell me how easy the Christian life is, I'd like to know about it. Tell me. Give me the formula. But I can tell you something. It is not easy. But the word of God says, if any man will come after me, he has to do what? Deny himself. He has to take up his what? Cross. And sit down? No. And follow. It's not easy. Paul was reinforcing this when he said in 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 26. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but only one receives the prize. But it didn't stop there. He says, so run that you may obtain. You can't watch others run. You can't sit down and wish and then win the prize. You have to get on the field, on the track. You have to run. And you have to put every energy you can find into it. If you are going to obtain, win the prize. They said everyone who competes for the prize is temperate or is what? Self-controlled in all things. Remember when you were going to school trying to get that degree, or you stayed up late and studied, it was not easy, not easy, but you did it because you want not just to pass, but to do well, you want to get that degree, and he said, if those people who do that, put all that effort, stayed up all night studying, do it, to obtain what kind of crown. To obtain a perishable crown, the Bible said. He said, we persist, we insist, we work hard to, do, to receive an imperishable. We run not as one that beateth the air. We keep under our body. 
because one of the enemies we're facing is not us out there enough, but one of them is our own flesh. Do you know that? It's an enemy. If you don't control that, if you allow that to take control of you, you're done. <laughs> he was establishing in the fact that the second prerequisite for a victorious, God honoring Christian living is aim. Just don't wonder about not knowing where we are going. We have to set what? Goals. We have to set goals. And we have to persist to realize those goals. We have to pursue those goals relentlessly. Same principle carries over in the Christian life. You have to set spiritual goals. And by the way, you just don't drift into being successful Christian. You have to pursue those goals relentlessly. Pursue those goals relentlessly. Paul was saying in essence, to be victorious in the Christian race, you have to focus your spiritual eyes not only on the course that you have to travel. You have to focus on the finishing line. But not only on the finishing line. You have to focus on the prize before you. People don't go through all that training and hardship just for running sake. They want to be winners. They want at the end of the race, they can receive the crown. They can receive the prize. Like the boxer who gets into the ring to fight for the championship belt. You have to understand that you are not shadow boxing. The Christian life is real. It's not imaginary. You are not shadow boxing. You are not throwing wild punches. You have to make certain that your punches are well directed, well aimed. You have to know what you're trying to knock out or destroy. You have to focus on your designated target. You have to. And you have to throw those punches with the intent of knocking out your spiritual opponent. And we have a spiritual opponent named the devil. <laughs> You knock him down, he gets back up, and he's at you again. You have to keep on keeping on, throwing those punches. When you think you have arrived, wake up. The battle is not over. As Christians, we face myriads of enemies. Enemies that are intent and destroying us spiritually. We have to come to grips with the fact that the road we have to travel is filled with spiritual potholes. Pay attention where you place your feet. Because you could be stepping into a hole that will break your anchor spiritually. You have to remember that along the way there are traps, spiritual traps set up by the enemy. And those traps are set up there not just to lay hold on you, but to wreck your soul. They are there. So to be victorious. In this very seductive, Satan-controlled world, 
It would say in Jamaican, you have to hang tough. You have to hang tough spiritually. You have to be prepared to win no matter the cost. No matter the cost. I am not surrendering. I'm going to keep on keeping on. I might be talking to somebody in the service today who have been thinking that you might just feel like you want to give up now. It's been so difficult. That's of the enemy. That is destructive. You have to make a commitment to keep on keeping on no matter the cost. As a songwriter puts it, am I a soldier of the cross? A follower of the Lamb? And shall I fear to own his cause? Or blush to speak his word? Are there no foes for me to face? Must I not stem the flood? Is this vile world a friend of grace to help me unto God? Then he says, sure, I must fight. I must fight spiritually if I would reign. And then he says, increase my courage, Lord. Increase my courage, Lord. I bear the toil, endure the pain supported by thy word. To spend time in God's word. He doesn't leave us out there to stumble, not knowing what to expect and how to become victors. Anchor your faith in God and in his unfailing word. A close analysis of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 to 26, reveals that winning a battle is not something that troops stumble upon. A lot of planning, a lot of training, a lot of exposure to danger. So victorious, God-honoring, Christian living is a direct result of spiritual aim. You aim at nothing, you're going to hit what? Nothing. You have to have an aim. You have to know where you want to go. You have to be informed as how to get there. And you have to be committed to use every spiritual energy that God provides to get there. And thank God he has given us in the Holy Spirit all the energy we need to be victorious. Amen? Paul says, I can do how many things? All things. Through Christ. Who strengthens me. When Paul declared in 1 Timothy 4, 6 and 7. I am already being poured out. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. There are many Christians who go a long way. They say, what happened to so and so? Can't see them. They drop out. Can't do that. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I've kept the faith. I've finished my course. And then he says, henceforth, there is what? Laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give unto me on that day. And not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. There has to be aim. And there has to be persistence. Aim and persistence would say 
We don't have to aim, but we have to what? Hang tough. Because those things are like family streets, we would say. If we are to end up being true spiritual victors. Then when Paul declared in 1 Corinthians 9, 25. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Of control. And he said, no, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. Let's go down there and watch those people training for the game. Boys, champ, and so on. The effort they put in. The effort they put in. And he said, they do it to obtain what kind of crown? A corruptible crown. But we do it to obtain an incorruptible crown. I don't care what the crown that you receive or the prize you receive is made out of. It can't last. But what we will receive when we stand before the judgment bar of God is something that will never diminish in its beauty, that will never faint, that will never fail. It will last throughout the endless ages of eternity. We make those comparisons. And the basis of those comparisons make the right choices. The third place, in the third place, requires disciplined application. You hear me? Disciplined application. It's not going to come just when everything is going okay. When everything feels right. When everything is in place. When you have all that you need and all that you want. It generally comes to those who remain faithful in spite of the challenges, in spite of the needs. Whether it is sickness or material needs, we remain faithful. He who remains faithful to the end will be what? Be saved. Will be saved. 1 Corinthians 9, 19 to 23, Paul relates how by Personal discipline. Personal discipline. He gave in. Gave up his apostolic right. They had a lot. He gave up his apostolic right. And became all things. To all men. So that he could win over their souls to Christ. Are you now on that challenge to give up your rights at the workplace, in the home, so that you might get what you would like? Or are you determined that the only one who has a right to control and direct my life is my Savior and God? And I tell you, if you remain faithful to God, he will make it up to you. He will make it up to you sometime, to some extent, in this world. But be sure, in the world to come. Of the marathon runner has been able to complete his marathon race without self-discipline as no meaningful educational pursuit has been realized without self-discipline. As no temptation has been overcome without self-discipline. So no spiritual victory can be won without them. Right. My body, I bring it into subjection. There has to be discipline. Lest by any means when I preach to others, I myself should be a cast away. As struck Swindoll puts it. If you're ready to put a stop to spiritual mediocrity, to replace excuse with fresh determination, 
procrastination, with tough-minded perseverance, I assure you that victory will become an attaining, attainable reality. Will. Rather than a distant dream. Are you just a dreamer? To enter the reality, you have to submit yourself completely to Christ. Vince Lombardi puts it. Football coach. Nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Our world is filled with lots and lots of talented, unsuccessful individuals, persistence, and determination alone will ensure victory. I don't know of any Christian, I can speak of myself, who has not had a lot of things to overcome. Talented, temptation. They come to all of us, you know. And it's by pure determination and commitment that I'm able to succeed. Paul says, I can do how many things? All things through Christ who strengthens me. The question as I bring this message to a close is since true success is not something that we stumble upon not something that we stumble upon but something that requires tough minded pursuit It is that which makes the end of it makes all the cost worthwhile. You have to look past the present, present pain to the future. And when you see what is ahead of it for you, what God has in store, it will make all the pain and difficulties and trials and troubles worthwhile. So in fourth and final trait, it brings into focus the reward, the reward that awaits the disciplined, the disciplined participant. Paul was voicing this truth when he declared in 1 Corinthians 9, 5, and everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. No, they do it to obtain a perishable crown. But we, an imperishable crown. I don't care what you win and who you are today. Whether you're king or president, no one can match who you are and what you will be when Jesus Christ returns. But the word of God makes it very clear that when he returns, Jesus Christ returns, we shall be like him. That blows my mind. Eh? We shall be like him. Like Jesus, yes. But we shall see him as he is. So in contrasting the incorruptible crown awaiting the victorious triumphant child of God with the reward awaiting the successful athlete or boxer in an old field. Paul was careful to point out that while only the champion will receive a prize. Listen to this. While only the champion in this world will receive a prize, every Faithful, born again, child of God will be rewarded with a prize. Amen? Every faithful, 
born again, child of God, will be born, rewarded. You will receive a crown at the end of the contest. The end of life. Then to highlight the incomparable superiority of the prize that the Christian will receive at the end of life's journey. Paul was careful to point out that while those prizes we receive in our time, the boxing ring or the end of the race are perishing. You can polish them as much as you want to, shine them up, but they can't last. The prize that we will get at the end of the Christian race will be imperishable will be glorious with every passing day of eternity. We praise God. But Paul said in 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8, I have what? Fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give unto me in that day. And not to me only, but unto all them that love is appearing. As I close, however, I, let me remind us all three things that are necessary for victory. First is that to be a victor, you have to, first of all, be born again. You can be as religious as you want to. You can, you can read your Bible every day. You can put your Bible under your pillow. <laughs> I won't help you. Except a man be what? Born again. He cannot even see much less to enter the kingdom of God. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. And praise God. One is born again. The moment he embraced Jesus Christ as Savior. I went to church many, many years before I was saved. In fact, at that time, we didn't have any thing around. We go to the movies to be entertained. <laughs> My number one entertainment was at church. And I had a little group of fellows with me. And especially when some of those uneducated deacons preached. Oh, they said some things, my friend. They were hilarious. And we would laugh and make fun of it. You know, God has his way of humbling us. One of these days, you know, one of these same deacons preached. And at the early part, we were laughing and making mockery of his presentation. God spoke to him. And this same laughing, stupid fellow <laughs> was convicted. The tears began to run down my face. And the moment the invitation was given, and we always sit in the back, you know. We were the last person back there. I was the first one to get up and go forward and gave my life to Christ as a teenager. And God transformed my life. I don't claim to be perfect, but I can claim to be transformed. To have Jesus Christ in my life. Still fighting the battle. And the battle will not stop until Jesus Christ comes back for anybody. But I was transformed. For if any man be in Christ, he's what? A new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I became involved. Very soon became head of the youth department. <laughs> and back in those days, they don't have to have preaching contests for young people. And I would go. And I think I'll live through my Bible. I can 
even now. Find pride. First prize book. <laughs> I received back then as a teenager. God is that. God is that. And by the way, he can do it for anybody. Anybody who would repent. As many as received him, to them gave you what? Power or authority to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. So all you need to do right now, you know, I don't care who you are or what your situation is, is to acknowledge your sinfulness. Embrace the, the, and follow the formula given by Paul in 1 Corinthians 9, that of making spiritual victory your number one pursuit. Drawing down on the divine resources that we have in Jesus Christ. For in Jesus Christ we have all things that pertain to what? To life. And to godliness. Paul could say as a result of that in first, second Timothy 4, 7 and 8. I am not ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. I have finished the course. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give unto me in that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. I say as I close, can you say from the depths of your heart this morning, Jesus Christ is my Savior and Lord is living right inside me now. And I know without the shadow of a doubt, he should come back now, later on today, I will go home to be with him in glory. Can you say that? You can, you know, if you have not yet have that assurance. For, Paul, for John says in John 1, 12, as many, as many as received him, to them gave you the power or the authority or the right to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You can put your name in the word many. As many as what? Receive him. Open your heart, your soul. Invite him in to be your savior. God gives the power or the authority to become the sons of God. Even to those who believe on his name. What a provision. How greatly available. And you can leave here today a brand new person in Jesus Christ. Prepared for eternity. For if Jesus Christ comes back. And by the way, he could come back before this day is over, you know. He could come back. And you would have been lost forever. But if today you embrace Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, you are eternally saved. We bless God for those truths. And they are unchanging truths. Let us bow our heads and our hearts together in prayer. Father, we can hide from man, but we cannot hide from you. You know who we are. You know what is going through our mind even now. You know our heart. You know our intent. But you're still here waiting for us just to open the door of our heart and let you in. You know those of us who are saved and you know those who are not, who are on their way to hell, and many of them could end up in hell before this week is out. They could die or you could come back. I beg you to give them grace to trust in you now. For you have said in your word as many as received you. You give the power, you give the authority to become your sons and daughters, even to them 
I believe on your name. With your heads bowed and eyes closed, you can pray any longer. You don't know for certainty if you should die right now, you would go to heaven. But you couldn't stand the thought of spending eternity in hell. And you say, based on God's truth, that you are trusting Jesus Christ as your Savior and your Lord. If you would right there decide in your mind to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, I can tell you, God will move down and save your soul. And I can guarantee you will never, ever, ever live to regret it. You will wish you had done it before. If God has spoken to you through this message, I'd like to pray for you in closing. With every head bowed and every eyes closed, this is so personal. And you don't know for certainty if you should die right now or if Jesus Christ should come back, you will be saved and safe. But you couldn't stand the thought of spending eternity in hell where the worms dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And you are willing to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. There's nobody looking around between you and God. Just put the hand up. Just slip it up where you are. God will see it. I will see it. I'll pray for you. And I know my God is able and willing to transform your life and to make you totally happy about it. Will you raise your hand and say, Pastor, pray for me. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ today. I want to make certain if I should die today, I would be eternally saved. Eternity is a long time to be sorry. You don't have to be sorry. You can trust him today. Anybody, quickly, just lift it up. God will see it. I'll see it. I'll pray for you. Anybody. Yes, I see that hand. Anybody? Quickly. Anybody? God spoke to me. I couldn't stand the thought of spending eternity in hell. It would take me, save me, change me. I will trust him. Anyone else? Quickly. 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 Yes, I see that hand. You can take it on. God will see it. I'll see it. Anybody? Quickly. Don't gamble with your soul. Even if you have a billion dollars in the bank, your soul worth exceedingly more giving your life. Yes, I see the hand there. Quickly. Anybody? Anybody else? Father, thank you for your word. And we know that these truths we hear today will rise up in the judgment as witness against us when we fail to obey you. Thank you for those who raise their hand. Thank you, Lord, that you are able to say to the utmost sin that come to you. And those who look on their lives and are wondering if they can live the Christian life, let them know, dear God, that the God who begins a good work will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. We thank you, we praise you as we commit them to you and help them to go all the way in this commitment. In the name of Jesus and for the glory of God. Amen. You're standing down there, if you raise your hand, whatever the need is, maybe you want to come forward as a Christian and renew your commitment. Renew your pledge to God to declare who you are. You can come, whatever the need is. You raise your hand, even if you didn't raise your hand, but you come as we close the service. Just stand. As we sing, and I beg you, let go, let go, and let God have his wonderful way. Step out to Jesus. To Jesus Christ. Raise your hand when you come to him. Even if it's just to pray for you. Oh
turn with all your organ we'll see it one time if you raise your hand I invite you to come to the front Let us pray. Eternal God, O oh heavenly, we thank you for this opportunity where we could come into your house of worship. To listen to your word as you speak, as you speak to us. Almighty God, your word, your word has gone forth. And we know, God, it will not return unto you empty. So as we contemplate right now, Almighty God, I pray that you will convict, you will challenge each and every one of us to examine ourselves. Examine ourselves to see how we measure up with your word. Almighty God, it is not your will for any to perish, but that all will come to know you and to accept you as Lord and King of their life. And I pray today that your word will make a difference, will make a change in the hearts and life of everyone under the hear of this message today. I pray, O oh God, especially for those that don't know you as Lord and Savior, that they will not leave here today without giving their life to you, submitting to you, O oh God. I pray that you challenge them. I pray that you give them no comfort, O oh God, and they'll come until they come to know you and accept you as Lord and Savior. The invitation is still open, O oh God. We never know when our time will expire. No one knows, almighty God. But we have an opportunity today. We have an opportunity today to submit ourselves to you. To come to you, almighty God, and say, I'm a sinner, O oh Lord. Please forgive me. Come inside of me, O oh God, and live inside of me and direct my life. Almighty oh, God, I pray that someone will come forth and you will change your life, Almighty oh, God. They will never regret it, Almighty oh, God. Mighty God, I thank you for your word today. Almighty oh, God, and you know, many times we come under your roof and we listen and we listen and we go back home, we take it for granted, but we never know. None of us know when our time will expire. This might be the last calling for you. And I pray, almighty God, that someone will come forward, will submit their life to you, almighty God. God will make a difference in your life. 
We all have troubles. We all have trials. But you can face these trials, almighty oh God, with the assurance that Jesus Christ is with you. He might not take you out of the fire, but he will be there with you like the three little Hebrew boys. You will not be burned, almighty oh God. God can protect you. God can deliver you. God can make the difference in your life. And we thank you today for your word. We thank you for your man servant, almighty God. And we have used them. Oh Lord, we pray that as your word go forth, we are assured that it will bear fruit. And I ask, almighty God, that as we dismiss here today, oh God, the invitation is still open. That someone might, you can come to anyone, uh, uh, any believer, and they can help you and guide you to salvation. Help you to understand how you can accept Jesus Christ today as your Lord and Savior and be saved forevermore. Thank you, O Lord, for your word. Thank you for everyone here today, every family represented. And I pray a blessing over everyone and pray that God will guide and keep you and take you home safely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Living in the overflow, I'm covered by your love, moving with the Holy Ghost. You're more than enough, I'm walking in your freedom now. Covered by your grace, witnessing your healing.